Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Chris Spangle, and I am the host. And you can check out more about us at podcastingandplatforms.com. And this is a special new series that we're going to be doing called Helping Jake. Jake is ready to get started on his podcast, and he just doesn't know exactly where to go from here, so we're going to help him out. So stay tuned for Helping Jake here on Podcasting and Platforms. Jake... Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What do you do? How did you find out about podcasting and platforms? Uh, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. I'm a rural letter carrier at the post office. Um, wow. You must listen to a ton of podcasts then. A ton of podcasts. And uh, that's actually how I came across your original We Are Libertarians podcast. Ah. Um, now the Chris Bangle Show. And then you started talking about the, the pat down. So I started listening to that. Um a lot of the rest of the network, Boss Hogs of Liberty, everyone like that. So I started wanting to get into it because I've been involved in politics before, kind of got out of it for a while and wanted to get back into it. And that's when I started listening again. Okay. So you're going to start a political podcast and you have made that, like, are you kind of thinking through whether or not you want to start the podcast or how did you come to the decision to start it if you are ready to start a podcast? Um, I came across the decision because <clears throat> I think right now, especially with the way things are so divided, it's been getting worse and worse over the past years. It's simply because we don't listen to each other. And I wanted to create a podcast where I actually sit down, listen to everyday people, my next door neighbors, you know, the person across the street, uh, grocery store workers, whoever is around me that I wants to join in on podcasts in my community. Just come on in. We can talk about whatever you want. That way you at least feel heard and we can start going from there and seeing where we all have commonalities. Okay, awesome. And you know, how much time do you think you can devote to it a week? Uh, I can do about three hours a week, uh, especially on the weekends. All right. Yeah. So you're you're looking to really talk to people in your community, do interviews one on one, and what's going to be you know the the central rule, as I always like to tell people, is like audiences are very selfish. So you've got to have a very clear definite vision of what they're going to get out of it. So if I tune into your podcast, what am I going to get out of it? You're going to get a perspective of where someone else got their ideals from and why they believe what they believe and what led them to those conclusions and where they're at in their life. Okay. Very good. And so, so you got the idea you know you're going to commit to it. You know you're going to you you've answered a lot of those early questions uh pretty well. And uh when are you looking to get started? Here in the next month or two. Okay. All right, so we got a lot of work ahead of us. Now, um what kind of equipment do you have? Have you bought equipment? Do you know what you need? How are you going to record the interviews? How have you thought much about that kind of stuff? Well, that's why I reached out to you. Uh as far as equipment goes, I all I have is the uh, Audio Technica 2100. Uh, that you recommended um i mainly use it for when i'm streaming uh with video games and stuff like that but um yeah other than that actually like going down and meeting with someone and having recording equipment there um that's where i don't know where to start other than what you recommended in the uh equipment podcast okay so and are you doing audio only or are you going to do any video uh, eventually I would like to move to video, um, but I can kind of see where that might be a problem for some people if they don't want their faces seen because they don't want to be judged by their political views. So it'll probably be mainly, mainly audio. Yeah, it can be very expensive to do video. And, and especially if you're doing something like this where you might be on site recording, it can get, uh, it can get hairy and it's easier to get better interviews sometimes with audio only because they People don't want to, they'll, they'll, they like talking about themselves, but they don't want to have to put on pants, right? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> they don't want to have to put on makeup or, you know, like there's, there's just an inconvenience factor in some ways with uh, video that even if you're doing it on Zoom that people don't, don't particularly like. Okay. So audio only. And do you want to do these on in person? Do you want to do them online like this? We're using a program called StreamYard. Uh, which, you know, I think looks pretty nice. It's a little bit better than a Zoom, you know, and you don't have to have a lot of production skill to go and add things later in Adobe Premiere or something like that. Um, ha have you thought about how you want it, how you're going to conduct the interviews? Uh, originally, it was going to be all online, especially with uh, 
COVID that was going on at the time that I was thinking about it. Um, but if people want to meet in person, so that at least they can see eye to eye that I'm being honest and truthful with them, that I actually want to hear their story. Um, I think that brings a little bit more relatable response and helps people open up more. Yeah. So I think that is a better way to do it is in person. So you could do it. I mean, you sound great and your camera looks good. Uh, the sound of the audio 2100 audio technica 2100 is great it's you clearly can sound how clear mine is like a $500 microphone mm -hmm. going into a $600 board with a $100 cable and he sounds just as good as me through a USB cable right so correct um <laughs> for 100 bucks but once you start getting into more in person stuff you're going to have to buy more equipment right um so have you thought about your budget at all do you know what kind of budget you have for equipment uh i hadn't really put a, a budget to it i would say probably no more than 1200 oh well you're good then okay all right um hmm how many people do you think you'd have on at once uh usually i'd try to do one-on-one -on -one, maybe every once in a while um one-on-two -on -two, like couples um especially if like they're married and stuff like that um other than that, I don't think I would have like a, a whole group or um, more than two at a time. Okay, so let me tell you what I use in the field when I'm recording stuff. So I'm using the Rode Podcaster Pro. That's $600. I really like it. But it's, you know, it's, it's big, right? So yeah. I don't take it with me because I don't like to tear down things. So in the studio here, I've got three lights, you know, and then I've got the above light you know, with the hair, and then I've got in front of me, this is a teleprompter with a camera inside of it and a little, you know, uh, if you can see this, um, you know, and, and then it all runs into my board with my microphone, and so I just don't want to have to take this stuff and set it down because the, the more you tear up and set down, the more it starts to break apart. Uh, some people will buy the Rode Podcaster Pro. I always recommend waterproof cases. They've saved my bacon more than once. Um, <laughs> so... You know, this is a $600 piece of equipment, and then the case is like another $120, uh, and then you've got microphones. So you, you'd you be at $1,200 pretty much with the Rode Podcaster Pro. Now, the, the benefit of it, and I can't show it to you on camera, but it's... Uh, I can't show it to you on camera, but I can maybe splice in some video here to, to kind of show people what it looks like. It's got four inputs for microphones. It's got a USB cable, so I'm connecting, you know, with your voice is coming through the USB connection on this. You can add your phone <coughs> via Bluetooth. <clears throat> you can add your phone via Bluetooth. You can also you also have like All right, let's get back. sound effects. You've got a sound effects, you've got your headphone jacks on it, you can put it into a, a speaker. So it does everything. You know, con connects to your computer. Uh, but it's, like I said, $600. Uh, it's a great piece of equipment. It's what I recommend to most people. Now, I don't take that out into the field. What I take with me is my Zoom H6. Uh, this is about 350 bucks. I've recorded hundreds of podcasts on this for clients, for the Pat Down, for the Chris Spangle Show. Uh, it sounds amazing. It's got great preamps. And essentially, it's you know, you've got your mic inputs here, and you can control the, the inputs there. And you've got, uh, you have the ability to connect this to your computer. If you had four people over at your house, you mm -hmm. could run a USB port here into the computer. It's just a little, it's not as user friendly as this. It only has the one headphone jack, which I don't think is a problem. Like, I don't tell people to buy headphone jacks when they're out in the field because one person needs to listen to this to make sure it sounds good. Everybody else gets distracted. Um, but you know, it's, it's an absolute beast. And like I said, I mean, I've used it weekly for probably five years. Uh, and it's, it's just worked great, but you know, that's, that's what I take with me because right. Like, like here's my, my cell phone. You can see it's, the same size as my iPhone Max, right? So it's nice and compact, and you can get... Uh, it comes with a case. 
I have like a big, you know, bigger case with all the attachments. It's got these little attachments on it. Mm-hmm. And so you can put a shotgun mic, you can put different mics on it. I've never used those. I wasted my money on them to be candid. Uh, but I'm a completist. If there's one, if there's attachments to be had, I need to buy it. And then what I always recommend is the Shure 58 or 48. This is a Shure, this is an SM48, and it's built like a 58 because they used to have basically, you know, the newer ones that 48s have, I think, a, a plastic uh, handle on it to save money, and this is like metal. But there's a reason that every rock musician uses the Shure SM58. They're 100 bucks. And they're built just like tanks. They're built like Nokia phones. Like you can drop oh this thing from the top of a building <laughs> and it will kill somebody. Uh, the SM58 is $100. They have an SM48 that I recommend to people usually because it's about 40 50 bucks now. It comes with a cable and it sounds exactly like this. It's built almost as tough. It does have a plastic coating, but it it's strong plastic. Um, and so... I, I say, why not save yourself 50 bucks and get a cable thrown in? Uh, now, a word about cables. The cheaper the cable, the more noise, line noise, you're going to get. All right, so this is a monster performer. You know, they, they like, gold-plated doesn't mean anything, but you can see this is a pretty thick cable compared to... Uh, you know, like a $10 cable that you buy at Guitar Center. Early on, I bought the $10 cable at Guitar Center. And guess what broke after three uses? And then the okay. other one was a hum. There was a hum. You, This one I got on clearance for 50 bucks 12 years ago. I've taken it to hundreds of podcasts. It sounds great. It's still, you know, in good condition. you got to wrap your cords right. See how that's like a nice little circle? Yep. You got to really, you know, let gravity do that quarter turn for you. And if you keep your nice cable nice, you're not going to spend a lot on it. Um, but you can feel the difference in just the thickness of the gauge, uh, the amount of insulation. That insulation does matter. You know, if you've ever been around, especially in the early days of cell phones, the da 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 that you'll hear through like a speaker or some sort of wire. Um yep. This has insulation to kind of help protect some of that. Uh, But I, you know, and this is a 30 foot cable. So I have two of these and then I have three sets of little, I use Mogami cables, which are kind of upscale cables. Um, The Mogami silvers are what I take out and they're 15 foot. And then I've got 30 foot cables, but you never know if you're doing a, a recording you're going to be at a long table. Like you are you go to interview Vladimir Putin. You're going to need to bring the 30 foot to, to get across the table, right? Uh, and if you're if you're having, you know, an intimate conversation with somebody sitting next to you, you just need to bring the 12 foot. But sometimes it's better to just get the 20 foot cable, have the option. And then as you kind of grow, you may want to add on different types of cables. And then obviously you need headphones. I use, I started in radio in 2004. And the studio had the AKG K240 studio headphones. And everybody in radio uses either the AKG headphones or they use the Sony headphones that you've probably seen that are like really tight on your head. These were like 50 bucks, 40 bucks at the time. And the other ones were like 80. So I got these. Plus, the, the reality is these are the only headphones that sound good to me. If I do broadcasting with the Sony's or in Sennheiser's or any other kind of headphone, it doesn't sound right to me because this is the first four years of my broadcasting career. This is what I used. Um, you may not be as picky, <laughs> so you may not need to spend the money. You could probably get the $20 Sony headphones or use the ones you've got on there for your gaming uh, and take those with you. But you do need headphones. You do need to make sure that you listen to the recording when you do it. This uh, I use rechargeable batteries. Um, these are not rechargeable because these were, oh, my rechargeable batteries died because I forgot to recharge them. Let me keep some good batteries in the case for when I'm stupid. Uh, as you can see, they're in there. But you always want to have, I like the rechargeable batteries because it saves me on batteries in the long run because I use this so much. And then it also runs on an SD card. It comes with a 2 gig SD card. I think I've got a 16 in here. Yeah. 
uh, and that's hundreds of hours. And uh, yeah, so that's the gear that I would recommend because you've already got the microphone to talk. If you're doing a Zoom call like this, mm-hmm. you've already got that microphone. So you kind of don't need the Zoom or, or, or the Rode Podcaster Pro, I would say. So you could go with the Zoom, which is a different company than the Zoom we all think of, right? right. Um, this is an audio brand. So go with the small, compact, cheaper option. It's a workhorse. It's built tough. You know, that's hard plastic right there. Uh, and get yourself some SM48s, built tough, and some good cables. So 350 uh, you're probably going to want to get at least three microphones, probably four. There's four inputs on this. And so that's 200 in microphones, and they come with cables. So that's uh, 200, 550, and then a pair of headphones and some batteries, and you're good. So you're looking at around six, $700 total once you do shipping and taxes and all that stuff, and that's what you'd pay for just the board. Now, right. you may down the line want to upgrade because you will it never stops there's always more equipment that you covet and that you need and want i have an entire i have the cable cave in the basement uh i had a couple podcast hosts come and raid the cable cave uh, two weekends ago oh i need cameras oh yeah here's a couple cameras that i bought that i never used um and my wife walks down there and goes oh this is where your savings went and i said yes but it's investment dear an investment um so so yeah, I mean five six hundred bucks, and you're good, and you can go out and do those interviews, and uh, succeed at it, and do really well. It's gonna sound great, you know, on the Zoom. Keep it at seven. <laughs> the thing about recording is, if it's too hot, you can't fix it. If it's too low, you probably can save it. So okay. you always want to make sure that it, that it sounds good. But we can go through the Zoom and how to work that once you get it, and uh, you know put it up there and then walk you through it and we could do a test recording with it. So, uh, but that's what I'd recommend. I mean, do you have any questions? Like I, I, I monologue there for a while. I probably should have let you talk like a good podcast host when you're doing an interview. Um, but once I get started talking about this stuff, I just can't stop. I get, I love it. I know. And that's why I, <laughs> I, I love listening to you. Um, cause you're, you're really informational. Um, it's great that I can go with kind of the not the lesser option, but it's yeah, it's more, not lesser. It's cheaper. Yeah, it's just it's just the less expensive because it's not as you know. Obviously, it doesn't have the the soundboard on there and the, for the intro and everything like that. But that can be added once I yeah. upload it to my computer and I can do that in the editing later. Um, so I don't need that right now. Uh, but yeah, that's that's very informative for for this first one. So that way I know which equipment to get and then. Uh, start formulating what questions I'm going to ask people and see where they want to take their topics. Yeah, so I say we quit there for the day and then get the equipment. Make sure you get it through the toolbox at podcastingandplatform.com. Those are Amazon affiliate links, which means I get a kickback from uh, Jeff Bezos. He's not going to be able to buy a second rocket based on all the equipment that you guys buy through the toolbox (laughs) uh, because he's sending me tens and tens of dollars in kickbacks. But... Uh, if you would support the show, please go over there and uh, use the Toolbox website to sign up for uh, you know various services that I use and love. And then you can also buy your equipment like the H6 and you know go click that link. And you if you buy groceries through them, they send me a kickback. So it's pretty cool. Um, now, so yeah, you can find all the links at podcastingandplatforms.com slash toolbox for all the stuff that I just talked about, Jake. And then once you get it in, then let's talk. Let's do another episode, walk you through how to use it, and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds great. All right. Thanks, Jake. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you, man. Thanks so much for tuning in to Podcasting and Platforms. Again, my name is Chris Spangle. Thanks to Jake for coming on. We're going to have more conversations with Jake as he gets his podcast started. Remember, Podcasting and Platforms is all about helping you get started right. And we've got the toolbox over at podcastingandplatforms.com, which you can go and grab that right now and get recommendations on gear and equipment and services that I love. And you can also sign up for coaching. And I'll personally help you in one-on-one sessions, much like I'm doing here with Jake. And you can also become a member of the website where we have a monthly show where we invite you as a member to come on the podcast and talk with other podcasters. It's like a facilitated conversation kind of giving you helping tips. So go check that out right now at podcastingandplatforms.com.